Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I am Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1997, Blacklight Syndrome by Bozy Eleven Stevens. Bozy Eleven Stevens is an American supergroup consisting of members of Missing Persons, King Crimson, and Billy Idol's backing band, whose music combines elements of rock, fusion, jazz, world music, and classical. Blacklight Syndrome is the band's debut studio album. It contains seven original instrumentals, largely improvised in the studio, which blows wow. my fucking mind now that I've heard that it. Does. The album was released on July 15th, 1997 on Magna Carta Records, produced by the band, and features Steve Stevens on guitar and pedals, Tony Levin on Chapman stick and bass guitar, and Terry Bozio on drums and percussion. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnscotto.com, you'll find links to Blacklight Syndrome on Spotify and YouTube so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, The Sun Road. This is my favorite just because it's the longest. (laughs) I was thinking it might be my weakest because it's the longest. Okay. Because I'm I'm not sure if it really needed to be one solid you know piece it's it's just shy of 15 minutes um it really makes the most of its time <laughs> the, the, it's like there are three different songs in it though yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean i like it that it would flow together right? anyway so mm. <laughs> but i think if it were separate i would say the first uh the opening section would probably be the weakest of the mm. part of the album for me um, I do like the opening sound effects, some nice fretless bass. I like the buzz on the guitar. It almost kind of sounds a little bit like a sitar. Um, yes. It is kind of an unexpected choice to open it with a piece that right. s- starts slow. Um, it's like Perry Como's Temptation that these play. It's weird. has a bit of a Zappa feel to it, which is a lot of the album does. That's um, true. That's true. I like how the drums follow the bass at the beginning. Um Nice melody. I'm I'm glad. Um, but but I was glad to see her Stevens finally going off after a couple of minutes. Back in the '80s, when he played with Idol, he was really more known for his pedal board than his playing. Oh, you know, he used a lot of effects that he made some interesting sounds. He was more more known as a sound effects kind of guy than a, a real shredder. So I'm I'm glad that this gave him a chance to really show off what he can do. Right, because then, like the second part of the song, like they don't break it down into parts, but you could definitely <laughs> tell there's a, a beginning, middle, and end to it. The the second part he hits, uh, you know, it's about I forget maybe three or four minutes yeah. in, he starts going Steve I. <laughs> yeah, he he like, goes from this right. clean melody to this very distorted tone. Adds a lot of drama. Um, nice to hear Bozy and Levin just go off for a bit, uh, just before the four minute mark. Um, and in, um, he's just doing so these volume swells while Bozio is, swell, is soloing around five minutes um, with Levin. Just, Levin is really the only thing keeping time during the drum solo, and maybe the kick. <laughs> uh, you know, Levin, I mean, Stevens is just supporting with these swells. Bozio is just going off, and Levin's just keeping time for a bit. Yeah, these kicks. and yeah, Levin does, like in the second part, he starts this low growling sound mm. with his face. And hearing Eleven go off is fascinating because oh, yeah. he prides himself on playing as few notes as possible. Right. Um, he, he was telling the story. He played on one of John Lennon's solo albums and Lennon came into the studio and said, you know, whatever you do, just don't play too many notes. He's like, you got the right guy. He had a, a Ernie Ball Stingray bass custom made with only three strings. Oh wow! Only the low three, lowest three strings, because he said notes above the staff are other people's jobs. <laughs> he prides himself on being as economical as possible, but he's a fucking virtuoso. Yeah, I didn't realize. Um, you know, Peter Gabriel didn't take him from King Crimson. Hmm. Crimson got him from Peter Gabriel. Oh wow! Okay. Like they, he didn't join Crimson until like eighty one, like yeah, the yeah. Adrian Blue. Yeah, uh, I was days. looking up that up for the next track, actually. But yeah, he came in in eighty one. When did he start with Gabriel? 
He was there from the beginning, like 77. Oh, okay. He's done a ton of session work. He was a session guy yeah. originally. Um, he, they say Pink Floyd, and I'm wondering what where what albums he played on you know Pink Floyd or what songs. Probably like Distant Thunder or Division Bell. Probably the still yeah, post water stuff. My guess, yeah, post waters. Um, I mean, when he did, maybe did a little fill in work. Um, I don't know. They I mean, brought in a lot of studio players, Floyd. Yeah, I mean, that's why when you're talking about like the greatest bands of all time, it's like, well, Floyd did a lot of cheating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Waters as a bass player, he's solid. He gets the job done. But I've always wondered about that little solo in Hey You. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out to be eleven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know that really would be something that he would play, isn't it? No, yeah. Because it's something here. Well, yeah. He plays a lot of fretless on this album, and yeah, that's yeah. a fretless solo. I mean, mm -hmm. um, Waters has told the story, but he bought a fretless bass and you know started fucking around with it and came up with that solo. But I've played fretless for twenty something years. He, and and I know Waters playing. He's not on that level. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good, solid, you know, foundational bassist. He's yeah. not that kind of soloist. So you know, I'm sure they brought someone in to play that. Um, but back to um, the song. Nice yeah, arpeggiated right. section comes in around five minutes. Love the harmonizer guitar that comes in around six thirty. Sounds like a synthesizer, but it's it's just an effect on the yeah. guitar. Because there are no keyboards on the album. Um, there are spots that sound like keyboards. Uh, Stevens is credited with pedals. I think they mean probably Taurus pedals, where he's actually yeah. playing a keyboard part with his feet. Um, love the chaos and noise just before the eight-minute mark. Um, some nice fretless bass comes in around then, too. The song just goes on a journey. Um, and I can see if that's a bit too much to, for you. Um well, I just don't see it going together necessarily. You know, mm -hmm. parts one, the relationship between parts one and two, and then part three, you know, part three is something completely different yeah. also. When and you then, get around the nine minute mark. And then a nylon string guitar suddenly comes in around 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you get this tender bass sound and softer drums, but, yeah. you know, they're working to build. Yeah. And it gets kind of spaghetti western toward the end. Right, you get this flamenco, which is a, a nice surprise, mm -hmm. but the drums kind of foreshadowed it before that, yeah. so it's not like a left field thing, but it was right. still kind of like a, I was not expecting that. <laughs> and then he gets into kind of like this Black Sabbath kind of riff while still with the flamenco yeah. beat kind of going at the same time. You're like, wow. <laughs> and, and the bass and drum sound at the end was just enormous. Yes. Yeah, they are just building at the la the last like uh, four minutes. Mm -hmm. On to track two, Dark Corners. This is why I was doing the research on Crimson, because this song reminds me a lot of a red. Um, it was the album just before, well, not just before, it was six, seven years before Eleven and uh, Blue came in. Yeah, 74. It was Fripp, um, John Wetton, and Bill Bruford. Okay. Um, very loud, very kind of metal sound in 74. This reminds me a lot. It's not to the point where it rips it off. Just a similar tone and feel. Um, nice use of a kill switch at the beginning, which is, I'm sure, is something Stevens uses a lot. Kill switch is either a switch or more often a button that just turns off the pickup. Oh, okay. So it just cuts, kills the sound of the guitar. And it's used rhythmically. Um, he does some nice work with that at the beginning. Um, here's where the keyboard part is that, that I think is probably just Taurus pedals. Just Stevens yeah. playing a keyboard part with his feet. But love the groove. Um, love the distorted bass tone that comes in around 145. I'm always a sucker for distorted bass. Yeah. But it just gets absolutely filthy about 250, about 230. <laughs> the bass is just disgustingly filthy, but still <laughs> articulate, which is amazing. Oh, it's laughing. <laughs> if there's anyone that's going to get away with that, it is him. <laughs> It's ridiculously distorted, but he's still articulate. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> and when I talked about um, Steven's pedal board, there was one effect he was especially known for back in the day, the ray gun. It just creates this ray gun sound. Oh, okay. 
Great use of that around 320. Um, it was just nice to hear him bring that back because he's so known for that. Um, the Rebel Yell solo it's used in, and it's that, you know, it, like it sounds like a toy ray gun. <laughs> and it's just a pedal he uses that makes that sound. It's not even done with the guitar. Um, you get the soft middle section in here. Yeah, there's a nice sudden stop around four minutes, and then it shifts down to the. And I love the the busy part that he played that um, Lozio plays, even though it's soft. He gets yeah. he's kind of you know he's he's always working. I love the way he fills space. You know, Bozio is not a straightforward you know floor on the floor kind of guy. No, <laughs> he he always likes to play like as many beats as he can reasonably. Um, and then, you know, the, the, you know, filthy bass comes back in and it just builds back up in intensity to right. the opening section. And then instead of, uh, flamenco, this gets, it's very, it's very staccato yeah. with the whole beat at the end. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an electric, I, I don't know if it's a distortion thing that they're doing, but, uh, it's, mm-hmm. it reminds me a lot of Frip. Yeah. So yeah, I can see how. You would think this was a Crimson song. Well, it reminds me of that, particularly the song Red, but the album has a lot of that sound on it. Probably mm. their heaviest album. Um, but yeah, they also get a bass and drum solo, not their genre, but a bass and drums solo at, at um, or drum and bass is the genre, um, at around 5.30. Um, again, we're just nice volume swells while those two just go off. Um, love the drum fills when they get back to that riff, though, and, and Steven's soloing at the end. Um, you just, again, just love to hear him shredding when he was, he was not really well respected as a guitar player in the eighties. He was very no. well known because of Idol and he, he played on, was it Dirty Diana? I think. Yeah. Yeah. He was very think, well you know known. What? I think once Michael Jackson picked, you know, put him on, it was like, oh, well, yeah, we got to listen to his work that kind of mm-hmm. kind of validated him, I feel. A little bit. It gave him a little bit more cred, but he was still kind of seen as the sound effects guy. Um, and so it's great to hear him showing what he can do. And not just with, you know, noisy electric, but, you know, go on to track three, Duende, bringing in the acoustic. Right. This, I, I, I'm kind of struggling between this and another track later as my my pick for strongest Mm because it's damn up there yeah it was close for me um just nice opening with some spanish guitar and it stays acoustic Um, it sounds like very typical you know spanish or flamenco mm -hmm. until you get those symbols yeah (laughs) plus you put those symbols and you're like wait a minute what's going on Bozu is doing something interesting I call it a bouncing metal drum sound he's it sounds like he's just bouncing ball bearings off the drum kit yeah Um, yeah for you just hear like this kind of this hi-hat and then it gets like loud the cymbals (laughs) and nice fast bass solo um and this is all in the first minute right because then he starts getting bluesy with this flamenco mm-hmm. but still like you know acoustic yeah and it's the riff kicks in around 115 still it's on a spanish guitar um on a, on a you know, nylon string um and a lot has already happened by that point nice off kilter groove in the verse um verse is kind of mellow nice change from the opening um, right this one reminds me a lot of the guy we're gonna review next week aldemiola who was also super influential um, love how Bo- this is where I particularly noticed how Bozio just plays almost every beat, but it works. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of my complaints when I first listened to the album was I didn't feel like I had enough Levin for me. Mm-hmm. But then when I came back a, like a couple more times, I started picking up where Levin is and what he's doing and and. You know, it's just something that you pick up on more listens, and that was definitely the case with this one. Oh yeah, Levin but... is beautifully subtle, and that's his work on everything. I mean, his work with Crimson, same. It's just he do- he's not he doesn't stick out. He he's makes you listen for him, right there with Stevens, mm-hmm. and yeah, if you, you don't if you're not listening carefully enough, and you know you're gonna miss it yeah so yeah it took me a couple times to come back i'm like oh whoa, whoa, okay that's what he's doing yeah <laughs> and i love how melodic he gets um 
And it's just, the bass never jumps out at you. There's never a moment, even when him and Levin, or him and Bozio were just soloing together, the bass still doesn't even really stick out. He has some moments where you're just like, whoa, okay, <laughs> that's what he's doing. But uh, yeah, there, there's others where he's just under the radar yeah. and playing just like these crazy things to go along with it, very hypnotically too. Yeah, yeah. He is, in in many ways, he is a bass player's bass player. Because he is all yes. about being the supportive, you know, foundation. But he can absolutely shred when he needs to. Um, speaking of shredding, loved hearing Stevens go off on the Spanish guitar. No effects, no no uh, distortion, no no frippery. <laughs> like at the end, it turns into like that Middle Eastern surf rock kind yeah, of sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just going off on it. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's a really good ending. And just these noise, slightly kind of noisy, frenetic passages from Levin. Not noisy in the terms of effects, just kind of atonal. Yeah. And just kind of noise, you know, noisy in that sense. Just here and there were, was nice. Um, Bozio gets nicely frenetic toward the end. It's just nice and pretty and fairly mellow, but there's still a lot going on. It's also the shortest track, which kind of goes nicely with your your weakest. <laughs> it's it's the shortest at seven twenty seven. I, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I I was looking at the time just to be sure because, um, it's a very long album. It's sixty seven minutes, I think. And each song is long. Like they like, then like I said, seven twenty seven is the shortest. On to track four, Black Light Syndrome. Again, nice mellow opening, some more great fretless, some nice swallows from Stevens. Yeah, Love very how... desolate feel. Like the the, yeah, yeah. the bass is so lonely, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but it's and... not low here. It's no, no. it's up front. He's kind one. of playing the lead along with Stevens. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's the bass or the stick. I'm sure he plays stick at points. I can't quite pick it out. Yeah, I could never tell what yeah. he's doing exactly. Um, great guitar tone. Nice, subtle use of the Floyd Floyd Rose tremolo system. Um, it's a very 80s kind of vibe, but he makes it work. Um, bass tone is just huge. Um, love how Stevens builds from a nice, simple melody to just going insane. Yes, when you get up to about six minutes in, you, you just get this sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. Um, around um, 2.30, get, gets this very jazzy. We get another drum and bass solo that goes on for about three minutes. With with Stevens just vamping while Levin and Steve and Bozio just rip. Yeah. For like three minutes. Maybe went on a bit too long. <laughs> I mean, I'm a bass player. I'm a percussionist. They're both amazing. But me, it's can solos can go too long. Sure. Sure they can. Um, but it, there was a nice build up back to the main melody from Stevens. Right. A nice short anthemic se- section around 730. And then just goes out nice and mellow again. Like it came in. On to track five, Falling in Circles. This is my pick for weakest just because it gets a bit too repetitive. I'm actually, this is the one that I think I like for strongest. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, the, <laughs> I think Stevens, I really like it, of course, when he gets into his metal guitar. <laughs> and, and I think he does that probably his best on the album, I think. Nice off-kilter timing on the riff feels a bit new wave. Um, very syncopated. It's actually in four, but it doesn't feel like it. Um, the voice samples that come in are nice. Like, they're dialogue from something that they sampled. Um, yeah, this kind of like... They're kind of like some Pink Floyd references almost. Like, the beginning had a almost like a little dark side of the moon thing at the very beginning of the album where you just have like some, you know, sound mm-hmm. noise. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, the weird converse dialogue you kind of hear, which you can't really make out what they're saying. No, exactly, it's too but... low to be intelligible. It's just yeah. the, as a, sort of the texture of a voice. I've tried. I listened a few times, <laughs> <laughs> tried to pick it in. But there isn't really any kind of timing change until three minutes in. Um, 
And then we get these nice, loud, distorted guitar stabs at 4.15. Right. Like, five minutes in, though, you get this, like... This ridiculous thrash solo. <laughs> Not the genre thrash, but just blow your cookies, everything yes. against the wall. Right. Um, and then we get, a, again, a sudden change to this cleanish kind of zapper riff around five minutes. Um, nice development from that into the heavier riff. Um glad to see them return to that kind of new wave thing at about eight minutes it's the individual sections i like they just go on too long for me without changes they just it just gets they each get a little repetitive on to track six book of hours um nice soft opening spanish guitar part um or you know flamenco kind of nylon string nice off kilter playing from levin throughout the track yeah, he's um, very upfront in this one. Yeah, he is. Um, great mellow riff, but just off kilter enough to be interesting. It's um, uh, soft and trippy. Exactly. Um, yeah. Love the almost minor feel of the arpeggiated section. Like, it's not dark and minor, it's just a little moody. <laughs> um, nice melodic nylon solo around two minutes. Nylon guitar, uh, nylon string guitar. Um, nice, fast, frenetic riffing on the nylon at around four minutes, which comes back again at seven minutes. Great, fast roto toms at around 4.50. Those gave me a very 80s feel, because roto toms are so 80s. <laughs> right. You know, Alex Van Halen is the one who's best known for them. Um, Alex Van Halen and Nick Mason, um, the solo at the beginning of time. Oh. The drum part at the beginning of time. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Times. Um, just to bring it back to Floyd, but yeah, he um, Bozio really goes off on the road as Hums. Really, the only time aside from the snare and kick that I could name what he's playing because he plays some interesting drums, right? I can't just use the word frenetic, and, and I think that sums up the the ending. <laughs> well, not just his playing is, is is fast or, or interesting, but the actual drum sounds he gets are fascinating. Oh, yeah. His kit is enormous. Like, he puts Neil Peart to shame. (laughs) And it's got just every size of drum imaginable. That Um, has to just be from playing with Zappa, though, because Zappa would totally be the guy going, no, no, I need this sound exactly, and he needs to be ready with it right away. I've I've seen footage of him with missing persons, and he already had the enormous kit, so he probably built it with Zappa. Oh, um, definitely. But I, I love this track. It's just fairly soft and contained, but also intense. And finally, track seven, Chaos Control. Love the opening Chaos, of course. Oh, yes. you know, right there with the name. It's just this nice ragged rock riffing and groove in the verse. It's really the most straightforward rocker on the album. Yeah, and the three of them just really come together mm-hmm. so well in the beginning. Yeah. Brings it to a close nicely. Um, love how they bring it, bring the volume level down a bit around two ten, yeah. and then just quickly start building it back up. Dynamics yeah, you, change, but it just stay, keeps it just stays straight ahead rock. You go like in the soft jazz middle, yeah, yeah, and then uh, you you end with this Jimi Hendrix right. kind of riff to close it out. I'm glad you mentioned jazz because Stevens is playing some octaves in there, which give it a nice jazz tinge. Um, and yeah, I wondered if I should be using the word jazz at first. So it's kind of like, yeah, I think that's what's going on yeah, here. Yeah, there were and definitely when, jazz leanings there. Um, and then when you tell me that they were doing this, you know, in the studio, <laughs> as they were going, if they were improvising, then it is definitely jazz. <laughs> this shit was improvised. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's amazing. the amazing thing. Um, <laughs> I think the groove in the softer section might be better than the louder section. Um, love the tone on the solo around 430. And it just, I mean, this is an expression I don't use for guitar very often because it's such a cliche, but it is just face melting at five minutes. <laughs> like full on shred. Like I had no idea he could play that quickly. I'm not a big fan of players who just play fast as a lifestyle. Yeah. But in small, well-placed bursts, I fucking love it. <laughs> like, I mean, show me you can do it and then back off. 
if there's a reason to do it compositionally, sure, definitely. Yeah, like impress me for a few, for like a you know a, a bar or two, and then go back to some melody, and I'm happy. Um, yeah, love how the original riff just kind of fades back in around seven minutes, and then it just goes back, goes out as beautifully chaotic as it started. So, would you recommend it? I definitely would. I I want to listen to this one a lot more just yeah. to like pick up on things I might have missed. Mm-hmm. I absolutely recommend it. It's just an hour plus of three amazing musicians just showing off and having a ton of fun. Like you can tell they're having a blast while they're playing. And the hour does not even. I mean, it goes. No, it by. doesn't feel like it's, it's long not a long hour. No. <laughs> That's it for Blacklight Syndrome. It's the next time we'll be reviewing Casino by Al Demiola. Also, Fusion. Fusion, for those who don't know, it's a mix of jazz and rock, basically. Yeah. Um, another Fusion album. Um, Al Demiola, super influential, particularly on guys like Alex Lifeson, a lot on Stevens, so that'll be interesting. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. There you are.